chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, and it is good to see y'all here this morning, amen, a nice weather outside, boy, I enjoy that cool breeze and uh, sunny days, Isaiah chapter 55, I was out of town Wednesday to preach in Gastonia, and uh, things went well, but let me say, I sure don't like being away from here, I, I tell you, I love this place, I love you, and uh, the, I just, I did get to see my, my in-laws and my parents, but I'd rather them come here than me go there, amen, I don't like being away, I will have to be away one Sunday in October, my, uh, my home church is having their homecoming, and my pastor asked me to come back and preach at it, and uh, any other pastor asked me to miss on Sunday, I'd, I'd have to say no, I mean, this is where I want to be, but he did a lot for me. I felt like I at least owe him uh, one time, and uh, he's a great man, And uh, but I, I'm, I'm already dreading missing here. I love being here, and then I got up here, and I thought, man, I was thinking, earlier, I love being here, and I got up, and I looked out, and I saw Brother Swenson, and I thought, why do I love being here? Uh, man, I mean, that's enough really to scare a guy off right there. No, I, I, I love Brother Swenson. He's one of my heroes now. I, I have his... Uh, his picture on my refrigerator, it keeps all the mice and roaches out of the kitchen, and I just, <laughs> well, I think I'm just going to surround my house with it, and <laughs> you ain't going to pray for me anymore, <laughs> I'm just serious, I mean kidding, uh, Isaiah chapter 55, let's look at verses number uh, 1 through 3, <clears throat> verses 1 through 3, the Bible says, ho, everyone that thirsteth, when he says ho there, he means, hey, listen up, yeah. That's what he's saying. He's saying, here now. He said, ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come, uh, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And that's what I am doing. Amen. Uh, uh, Miss Hines brings me them homemade biscuits and them cakes and pies, and uh, more and more I'm delighting myself in fatness. Praise God. Uh, incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, uh, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Let's pray. Father, once again, thank you for your word. Lord, we need you now. Lord, I want you to work in my heart uh, as you already have been. Continue to do so. Lord, change us. Draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, here's Isaiah. He's uh, uh, speaking to the children of Israel. He says, hey, hey, listen up, everybody. He says, if you're thirsty, come get something to drink. Hey, if you're hungry, well, then come get something to eat. And then he goes on to ask him, he says, why in the world are you uh, uh, spending your money on that that's not going to satisfy you? Why are you chasing these things, per, pursuing these things, getting involved in these pursuits, trying to find joy, trying to find satisfaction, trying to find some substance, trying to find meaning, and yet you're, you're not able to find that. The children of Israel, they were spinning their wheels. I mean, they would uh, uh, go after this country's God. They turned from the true God that had blessed them, and they went after this country's God. Boy, no satisfaction there. We just got further into bondage, so I'll go after this God, and boy, that didn't help either. No blessings there, and boy, I'll go after this God, and God said, hey, listen, what in the world is it you're chasing? The book of Ecclesiastes, Song of Sol or, or, or Solomon, he said, uh, uh, he said, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He said, I tried wealth. I mean, I had everything I wanted. I tried all the food. I tried learning. I, I tried everything that this world had to offer, and yet it was vanity. You know what that word vanity means? It means empty. It's like trying to catch the wind. You ever seen a little kid try to, you know, I, I hate to admit it, but I tried that once when I was a kid. The wind was blowing, and I, I reached up and got me a handful of it, and, and when I looked, it wasn't there. You can't do it. It's vain. It's empty. And the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, bleh, Solomon said, I've tried everything, and it was all empty. He gets to the end and said, this is the whole duty of man. He talks about serving God. He said, that's where it's at right there. Isaiah talking to the children of Israel, he said, hey, listen, if you're thirsty, then come to the waters. Hey, you have no money? That's all right, come, because this is free. 
Uh, he says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Why do you labor? He said, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? He says, now hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in its, itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now, who was he calling to? Whoever wanted to come. He said, hey, you thirsty? Then come on. Hey, are you hungry? Come on. You're not satisfied? Come on. I want us to know, se notice several things about this passage. It is a call to come to the Lord. Notice that the call was made to the thirsty. Notice that the call was made to the poor, the one that had nothing to offer. In verse number 2 we see that the call was made to the discontent. This call was made to the dissatisfied. The call that Isaiah was giving here, it was a call to find all that they had been looking for but could not find. It reminds me of Paul going up on Mars Hill and he talks to the, the philosophers there and he said, listen, and they, on his way there he passed all these statues, all these different gods, and he comes to this one monument and it says, I mean, they were superstitious. Boy, we may have left a god out. And so they made a monument to the unknown god. And Paul begins to talk to him. He says, listen, uh, all your pursuits, this, these, uh, all these gods, and it's not leaving you satisfied. It's not bringing you what you want. Listen, I came to tell you about this one God, that unknown God. Why? Because he satisfies. <clears throat> it's a call to those that, uh, to find all that they have been looking for that they could not find. The Lord was saying, I have what, what you need right here. Why? Are you looking everywhere else? Why are you trying to find meaning where there is no meaning? Why are you trying to find satisfaction where no satisfaction is to be found? He said, why are you trying to find contentment in places that only leave you empty? He says, hey, come to me, the Lord says. Come to me and find what you're looking for. I've driven down the road and from time to time I'll see church signs and that'll say, come as you are. And then I've heard other fundamental Baptist preachers get up and rip it up about how those signs are unscriptural. Oh, this come as you are, it's ruining Christianity, it's ruining the church. But listen, as, far, as I read the Bible and study the life of Christ, I've got to say that I think I disagree with those that say that's unscriptural. I'll tell you the philosophy that's hurting churches and hurting Christianity. There's two philosophies. It's not just the come as you are, but leave as you came. That's hurting. Hey, and it's also the come as we are philosophy. Hey, if you can't come through those doors looking like us, smelling like us, talking like us, then you don't need to come. You need to come as we are. Listen, that's hurting Christianity. Here we see, uh, uh, let me read a verse to you, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here's a call to come. Jesus says, hey, you're heavy laden. You're loaded with burdens. Your life is far less than perfect. You're carrying a lot of baggage. You, you, your life is falling apart, and the Lord says, hey, you're the one I'm wanting to come. Come to me. Matthew 26, 7, there came a woman to him having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head and he sat at meat, as he sat at meat. We see the same story in Luke chapter 7, verse 37, and behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, now he's at a Pharisee's house, a religious man's house, this other lady hears that Jesus is there. Hey, what kind of lady is she? Oh, maybe she's a, a very spiritual lady, a religious lady. No, the Bible says that she was a sinner. She was known to be a sinner. She brought an alabaster box full of ointment. And by the way, this was a costly box. Bible scholars believe that it may have taken a year's worth of wages to buy this box full of precious ointment. And here this lady takes a year's worth of living and she brings it to Jesus and she breaks it and she anoints his head and she weeps and she washes his feet with her tears and with her, with her hair. 
and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with, the, with tears and had wiped them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, I'm afraid that many times this is our attitude. This man, he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Hey, who do you think that Jesus came to seek and to save? That which was lost. Hey, in verse 47, Jesus speaks of this woman and he says that her sins were many. Yet when she came to the feet of Jesus, listen, she found that she was welcome at the feet of Jesus. Hey, she uh, 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 was had a life that was far less than perfect. Her life had been marked by sin. Her life had been scarred by sin. Her life had been destroyed. It had been enthroned in ruins by sin. And yet Jesus said, hey, you're a sinner. You're lost. Your life is destroyed. It's in ruins. Hey, come on to me. Come on to me. We see in Matthew 19, 14, but Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine these little children? Man, they had been out playing in the dirt. They had been sweating. They probably had. It, you remember when you was a kid? And you'd get out playing and you'd get all dirty and you'd get those black rings right here around your neck. You know what I'm talking about? Those black dirt rings right there. I love those things. I got home the other day. I'd been working out in the dirt. And when I got home, I had them black rings right there. It took me back to my childhood. I love coming in like that, smelling like an old sock, and uh, just sweaty as can be, dirty as can be. And my wife will say, hey, how are you doing? I'll say, fine. And I'll open my arms like this, and I'll walk towards her, and she'll say, not till you get a shower. But Jesus would take me. <laughs> Christian means Christ-like, honey. Imagine these little children, they're out playing in the dirt. I remember when I was in college down in Florida, down in Pensacola. We would go on Saturdays, I, I, I went to this Bible club we had in an area called Truman Arms. It was the projects, it was a very dangerous area, very dangerous. One half of it they nicknamed Saigon because there were so much shootings and killings over there. But we'd go there on Saturday. We'd pick up these poor little kids. And we'd have Bible club with them. We'd play games with them. You know what they liked to do most? They'd say, let me ride on your neck. Let me ride on your neck. Now listen. Now not to be gross, I just want to tell you. Sometimes they'd have mucus running down their face. Sometimes they smelled they didn't, hadn't had a bath in a couple days. Their clothes, you could tell they had been worn for quite a while. It's been a while since they had been washed. They're out there dirty. I can imagine some of these kids right here as Jesus has sat down and, and they're out playing and they see in the, and they say, Hey, I heard that man. Hey, I heard about him. That's Jesus. I heard about him. Wow, he fed 5,000 people with some fishes and bread. What if he's got something for us? Hey, I, I heard he healed a, 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 a lame man that couldn't walk. And I tell you, I stubbed my toe playing kickball the other day. I bet he could heal me if he could heal that lame man. I'm sure some kid was standing over there, had his finger up his nose saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now you say, Pastor, that's gross. But you, you know what I'm talking about. You were one of those kids. I bet Miss Thompson walked around with her finger up her nose all the time. No. Nah. He said, suffer these little children. When the children came to him, man, the disciples said, oh, no, don't you bother the master. But Jesus said, hey, I know they're young. I know they're immature. I know they don't know how to behave. I know they don't know what to say. I know they may be coming with the wrong motives, but as long as they want to come to me, then let them come to me. He was saying, hey, those that act childish, let them come to me. We get so bent out of shape over people, don't we, that Jesus loves and He says, I want them to come to me. Those who don't know how to act in life, much less in the house of God. 
They don't, they don't even know how to, uh, how to live life, and yet they, they come to the house of God, and, and they don't behave just like, I mean, man, look, they're not setting up straight. I mean, my goodness, you see how that person's laid down in the seat? My, hey, did you see? They were writing notes the whole time, and this they are doing it. Hey, my goodness, Jesus said, hey, suffer them. Allow them to come unto me. He's saying, hey, come as you are. Hey, you're, you're in your sin. Your life has been scarred by sin, and hey, come on to me. Hey, you're immature. You don't know how to act. You don't know what to say. Look, we have some people in this church right now. Praise God. They don't have a lick of church background. And it is so exciting. You do not know what they may say or do at any moment. Man, we had this guy. I led a a Palestinian guy to the Lord back in Charlotte. His name is Michael Amin. Michael Amin, Pastor Barry sometimes would say, Hey, would somebody like to give a word of testimony? And son, I tell you what, whenever he stood up, I thought, oh no. Why? Because sometimes he would say things that you ought not say. I mean, he, he never cussed, well, in the church, but uh, he never cussed in the church, but he would say those words that were borderline while he was giving a test. Boy, I want to thank the Lord for this. And boy, he would tear off into saying some stuff, and I'd think, oh no, oh no. He just didn't know how to act. Somebody said to me recently, they got saved and said, hey, Pastor Wise, I just want you to know, I don't have a clue about this thing of being a Christian. I said, neither do most of our members. They know what it's like to be a church member, but being a Christian, that's a different story. And then once again, I pointed out Brother Swenson. No, I'm teasing Brother Swenson. <clears throat> now listen, I said, I, I don't have a clue about this. I said, that's fine. He said, Pastor... I've got a lot of issues. I said, that's fine. He said, no, 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 you don't understand, Pastor. I have a lot of issues. I said, we all do. Danny was standing with me. Danny said, hey, man, so do I. The fellow looked at me and he said, so you mean that if I mess up from time to time, you're not going to throw me away as a lost cause? Why? Because a little immature in the Lord, he's a baby in Christ. Why? Because he was heavy laden. Now Jesus said, come to me. He said, hey, those little children, those, those who don't know how to act in church, much less in life, those who, who act childish, those who, who don't know how to sing, and those who don't know how to dress, and those who don't know how to find their place in the Bible, and those who don't know how to control their children. He says, hey, let them come to me. Just come on. Come as you are. I've been, I've been labeled liberal recently. You know that? Anybody told, ever told you I was liberal? I, I don't understand why. Except for this right here. Somebody will say to me, Hey, I'm thinking about coming visit your church. What's your dress code to come to the church? And I'll say this, Just wear some clothes. If you're wearing clothes, we're safe. Patrick tried to come in his swimsuit one time and I had to draw the line. Pastor, you mean you let people come dress just any way? They may not know any better. They may not even be saved and you're worried about that. Jesus said, hey, come to me so you don't know when to stand up and sit down. So you don't know what words to say. So you don't know where to turn to in a hymn book. So you can't keep up with the, with the congregation leader. None of us can. He said, hey, come to me. Come to me. In John 7, 37, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If a man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He said, the thirsty. Hey, you're heavy laden. Your life is, you, you've got all this baggage. You've got all these issues in life. Well, you come on. Well, you, you, you're just saved. You, you, you just got saved and you don't know all the ins and outs of, of how to behave in church and how to be the Christian. He said, that's all right. You come on. Hey, you're thirsty. You're welcome. Revelation twenty two seventeen. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. 
Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This represents those who aren't satisfied in life. Hey, you've gone out there, or you, you, you've gone out there with, with a longing and you, you can't seem to get what you're looking for in the world? It's leaving you thirsty. He said, then come on. There's plenty to drink right here. What, our alcohol didn't quench that thirst? What you, you mean the drugs haven't quenched that thirst, that longing in your soul? You mean that party life? It, yeah, you had some fun, but it, you mean it didn't satisfy? It didn't, it didn't quench that thirst? You mean that relationship you've been pursuing, that didn't quench that thirst? You've tried just about everything, and you remain dissatisfied. Hey, and you're still thirsty, and Jesus says, Hey, come, come to me. He said back there in that Isaiah, he said, Why? Why do you keep pursuing these things? that don't satisfy. I heard that one of the definitions of of, uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, trying to get different results. Boy, I know that this, this is wrong and it's destroying my life. And I need to stop. But I think I'll do it a little bit longer. I said, hey, come on, you're thirsty. You've tried it all, you, and it's not satisfying. It's not meeting the need. Then come on, there's plenty of here. There's plenty to drink right here. He calls to the thirsty. He calls to the immature. He calls to the heavy laden. He also calls to the outcast. In John chapter four. We see Jesus, he sits down at a well. He, he, he's heading to a, another area in Israel, but he's, he, the shortest way is to go through the country of Samaria. The Samaritans and the Jews, they had no dealings with each other. They were considered half-breeds physically and, and half-breeds spiritually, and the, the Jews looked down upon them. They were considered as lesser humans, and Jesus, he sits down on the side of the well, and here comes one of these outcast women. She gets a pail and she's about to drop it down into the into the well there. And he says, hey, could you give me something to drink? Now, let me tell you something. Most likely this lady didn't have but one dipper. That didn't my pastor used to say when he was a young boy, went to the church up in the hills of Tennessee and North Carolina. They'd have a bucket of water, drinking water. and There would be one dipper in that. And when you got thirsty, you'd go get that dipper and you'd, drink some of the water. He says a little kid, he had watched very carefully which side was drank out of and he would reserve him a spot in his mind. He said, okay, nobody's touched that one yet. But Jesus said, hey, I'll drink out of your dipper. But, but I'm an outcast. You're, ta- you're talking to me? You're a Jew and you're talking to me? Then she leaves. She realizes this is the Christ. She immediately drops her pail, drops her dipper. She runs back to the town and she finds a bunch more outcast. Those who were looked down upon. Those who were heavy laden. Those who were thirsty. Those who didn't know how to act. She said, come. (laughs) Come on. Hey, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. Here's the disciples. They're concerned with Jesus. Here, you need to eat something. But here come the outcast. And Jesus said, oh, that's not what I need. Lift up your eyes and look. The fields are white in the harvest. He sees all these outcasts coming. He said, look, boy, this is what I want right here. This is what meets my need, is receiving the outcast. They were considered lesser humans. I, listen to this, John four twenty seven, speaking of the same story. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? When the disciples came up, he's talking to this outcast lady. And they see him, they do not speak to her, and they don't even speak to to Jesus. I don't have anything to do with him. Why? Because she's an outcast. I wonder what he's doing. I'm not asking. I'm not getting near him. Outcast. But Jesus said, I want the outcast to come to me. Mark 5, 2. 
When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him a man out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, the possessed, the crazy, the violent. This man was out of his mind. This man was a violent man. He lived among the tombs. He would hurt himself and those that would try to bind him. He seemed to be too far gone. Oh, there's no help for that guy. You ever met anybody like that? Some of you, before you got saved, you may have been that kind of person. There's no help for that guy. Man, he knows the truth. We've told him the truth and they've been to church and (coughs) there's no hope for them. But he found refuge. He found healing. He found forgiveness. And he found cleansing. And he found love at the feet of the Savior. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, we see that some people come to Jesus. They're sitting down, and he's sitting down, and he's teaching them. Then the scribes and Pharisees, in verse 3 it says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they bring this lady, says, Hey, look, she's been taken in adultery. We call her in the very act of it. Now Moses says that she must be stoned to death. Jesus, he's kneeling down, he's writing something in the sand. The whole time they're talking, he stands up, he says, Okay. He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. He kneels back down. He begins to write in the sand again. He's not concerned with them much. One by one, they meander off, and he stands back up. They're gone. He said, where's your accusers? They're not going to stone you? No, he said, I won't condemn you either. Just go. Don't do it anymore, okay? Look, folks, Jesus was not placing a stamp of approval on their sin. He wasn't placing a stamp of approval on it. Matthew chapter 9, verse 10. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Although, who who came to him? Who did he say, I want them to come? Those that are heavy laden, those that, that thirst, their life is not satisfied. He said, all those who are guilty of sin. You're welcome here. That goes just... Hey, it goes just as much for your gossip as it go- goes for their drinking, by the way. Isn't it amazing how when we think of how bad a sinner is, somebody is a sinner, we always think of their sin and we don't think of our own? Hey, that goes for uh, uh, just as much for your pride and self-righteousness as it does for their drug use, by the way. That goes just as much for your indifference as it does for their cursing, by the way. Who was he calling to? Who did he say could come? Anybody that had a need. Matthew 15, 30, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. You don't find anywhere where Jesus says, No, 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 not you, not you. No, 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 not you. Not you, I'm sorry, you're not welcome here. No, 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 not you. Come. Oh, but Lord, these are little children. They're dirty, they're dirty. If they want to come, let them come. Oh, but Lord, this over here is an adulteress. She's she's a harlot. But if she wants to come, let her come. Oh, but, but Lord, this was a demoniac. This man was possessed. He was crazy man. But if he wants to come, let him come. Oh, Lord, let us clean him up first. No, no, let him come just as he is. But Lord, let us clean her up first. Let us get her right, or her life right first. No, 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 not first things first. Let him come as they. Oh, but but Lord, let us get this out of his life first. No, no. If he wants to come, let him come. Come as you are. But listen. Don't leave as you came. Come as you, you come as you are. And by the way, people come through that back door and, and they look, don't look as presentable as you think they ought to look. Hey, let them come. They come through that door and you say, oh, but preacher, I know the sins they're involved in. Hey, let them come. 
Because just maybe they won't leave the way they came. The come as you are philosophy only comes uh, only becomes a problem when you when it extends into the leave as you came. In other words, come as you are and just stay that way. You don't have to change. Pastor, you're saying I have to change? I'm saying I want to change. I'm saying that God wants to work a change in me. What in the world could he be changing in you? Man, listen, I'm far from being like Christ. And I want to be more and more made and conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Listen, that's how every one of us ought to have, we all, every one of us ought to have that desire. God wants to work a change in everybody who will come to him. Hey, he, he wants to mold us into the image of Christ. You say, well, preacher, look, I'm not a, I come, but I'm not a drunk, and I'm not a drug abuser, and you know, everything's going fine. No, but maybe you're self-righteous. You know what Jesus says to you? But that, he says, that's okay, come on anyways. Let me change that. You're bitter. You're, you're prideful. Maybe you're a gossip. Maybe a slanderer. Maybe a liar, a cheater, a thief. Don't be like that Pharisee that says, Father, I thank you that I'm not like that guy he is. Because right here, listen, right here we all are. Every single one of us. Every, listen, every single one of us is a sinner. I've never tasted alcohol. I've never done any kind of drugs. Never smoked a cigarette even. I know the wickedness of this heart. I know the stinking wickedness of this mind. Those thoughts and desires that I battle are just as, just as real as the, the literal material things that you battle. The demoniac came as he was, still possessed, out of his mind, about naked. He came as he was, but he didn't leave the same way he came. When the people came to hear about it and they saw him, they said, hey, he's clothed and in his right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Just imagine if he came running, they would have said, no, 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 you're, you, you can't come. You can't. No, Jesus said, let him come, come as you are, but don't leave as you came. The lame came as they were, but they didn't leave the way they came. The adulteress came as she was, but she didn't leave as she came. The outcast, they came by the droves the way they were, but they didn't leave the way they came. The lepers came as they were, but they didn't leave as they came. The liars, the thieves, the undesirables, the religious, they all came as they were. But if they were willing to yield to the Lord Jesus Christ, they did not have to leave the way they came. Let me say something to you here. Every time you read the Word of God, it can be a life-changing experience. If you'll let it be. Those changes may not be drastic. But little by little. Listen, every sermon you hear preached, can be a life-changing, life-altering sermon if you will allow it to be. If you'll yield to Him. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says, listen, yield to Him and let Him transform your life and make you more into the image of Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. He says, just as I look into a mirror and I see my faults, I see my hair sticking up, so I, I, I lay it down, and, and I see a piece of food here, or toothpaste, and I, I clean that off. I look in the mirror, and I, I make the changes necessary. He says, if you'll yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, and when He shows you those things that need to be changed, you will allow Him, He will make those changes in you.
if I yield myself to the Spirit of God, He will change me into the image of Christ. And by the way, I'm not talking just to the unsaved. I'm talking to you that are saved. You've been saved for years. And man, you, you, you come and sit on the church pew. You're involved. Listen, hey, you keep on coming to Christ. Let Him continue to change you. And I'm not talking about change me or change you into what others think we ought to be. But change me into what he thinks I ought to be. Hey, so many times in churches, we, we have this image of what so-and-so ought to be. No, you, you concentrate on what God wants you to be. Let God concentrate on what he wants him to be. And maybe we can encourage each other to yield each other to Christ and, and be what we need to be. Don't leave. Listen, child of God, every time you come to church, you're welcome to come the way you are. I want you to know that right now. Well, aren't you afraid it'll give our church a bad reputation? I'm not worried about that, man. I just want to help people. Aren't you afraid that it will, it will uh, uh, taint the image of the church? Listen, the image of, uh, of the churches have been tainted enough because of a self-righteousness, self-righteous attitude. Hey, yeah, you come as you are. But don't leave the way you came. Man, let God do something in you. Hey, if you're thirsty, there's plenty to drink. Hey, by the way, there's plenty of peace in that walk with the Lord. There's plenty of cleansing. You just, you just come the way you are. There's plenty of forgiveness. There's plenty of mercy. There's plenty of, of, of grace. There's plenty transforming power. You're weak, you're wore out. Hey, there's plenty of strength. You're, you're at your, the end of your rope. Hey, there's plenty of hope here. Hey, you, you can't find your, the, the satisfaction out there in the world. There's, there's plenty to satisfy with the Lord. There's plenty of joy. Listen, whatever it is that you need from God, there's plenty of it. It's a fountain that will never run dry. There's plenty of whatever you need. Hey, what causes them to come? What will cause those in need to come through those doors back there? What will cause those in need to come to Christ? What will cause those, those, uh, 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 those who are saved but still need to get closer to God? What will cause them to come? Listen in Mark 38. And from Jerusalem and from Adamea and from beyond Jordan and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. It was when they heard the great things he had done in the lives of others that they said, boy, if he did it for them, maybe he'll do it for me too. And they came to him. When the Samaritan lady met Christ, the one, I mean, hey, she was undeserving. She was an outcast. <clears throat> she went and told the other Samaritans, she went and told the other outcasts what Jesus had done for her. And they came. When they heard of the demoniac, they heard, hey, this demoniac, he, he's clothed now and he's in his right mind and he's sitting down calm at the feet of Jesus. What did they do? They said, boy, we've got to go see this thing. Luke 5, 14, and he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. He said, hey, go show people what I've done for you. He said, no, you don't have to tell anybody. Very few times do you see that in the Bible where the Lord says don't tell. And what th they couldn't help it. They had to tell. The Bible says they blazed the message. They went telling everybody, hey, look what Jesus did for me. And when he saw what Jesus had been doing in their life, they said, hey, I... I think I could go to him as well. I want you to just think for a minute of nobody but you and the Lord. What is it that you need today? There's plenty of it at the foot of the cross. Hey, you, you, you lost on your way to hell? There's plenty of grace and mercy and forgiveness and salvation at the foot of the cross. He's not running on short supply of that. 
You're saved and on your way to heaven, but man, you've, you've stalled out. Maybe you've backslidden or you, you've become stale in your Christian life. You say, boy, I, I need to, to some more strength. I need more courage. I need more hope. Whatever it is, I need this, pastor, from God. Hey, then come as you are. But don't leave as you came. Would you yield to him? Child of God, would you yield to him? I wonder if sometimes he gets tired of competing with the world. Like there in Isaiah, he said, look, all you need, I have it right here. Why are you trying to get what you need from all these other places and it's not there? (laughs) He said, all day long, I've stretched forth my hand. A stiff necked and gainsaying people. He said, I stretch my come to me. Pastor, I'm not worthy to come to the Lord. Not a single one of us are, but through the blood of Jesus Christ we've been made worthy. Come as you are, church. But don't leave like you came. Everybody bow your head and close your eyes, please.